So another E3 is over, and although this E3 was a little bit lackluster, we didn't have a whole lot of like big announcements. There wasn't anything to get really excited about that we didn't already know about. It was still a really good E3, and I still had a super great time, and I got you guys tons of stuff that I'll be giving away on my Twitter a little later. As you can tell, I'm a little hoarse. I lost my voice. I went to Disneyland the day before E3, which is probably not a good idea when you're doing on-camera work. And because of the screaming and the yelling at E3, because you have to yell at people to talk to them because it's so loud, I've lost my voice, and I'm having a little hard time getting it back. So first off, really quick, this isn't HD, obviously. I think I've dropped my HD camera one too many times because now I can't focus. I need to get a new one, um, and that's just not going to happen just yet because those are kind of expensive. So we're going to have to deal with this non-HD quality. So let's go ahead and get to the top 10 games of E3. Number 10. I know a lot of you guys are going to say, but Rachel, that's done by the same guys that did Heavy Rain. And you didn't like Heavy Rain. Correct. I didn't. And although in this demo we've seen of Beyond, we didn't really get to see pretty much any gameplay. We might have seen snippets here or there. Mostly we saw cutscenes, which I usually frown upon. But damn it, those cutscenes looked awesome. And this story looks really, really, really cool. And thank God they finally got some American voice actors. All I can hope for is that Beyond is going to have a little bit more gameplay elements, a little bit more action gameplay elements instead of just a long ass movie that I randomly hit buttons during for quick time events. I don't want another game of quick time events, so I'm hoping that the guys over at Quantic Dream have heard my pleas and cries and some of yours that we would like a little bit more gameplay style to these games. And that's why it's just my number 10, because although it looks great and the voice acting is going to be much, much better than Heavy Rain, I haven't seen enough gameplay to really bump it up further up on my list. Number 9. Resident Evil 6. Resident Evil 6. Yes, yes, yes. I'm so excited for this game. And I actually got to sit down and play a level as Leon and a level as Chris. And I gotta say that the... The differences between the gameplay styles when you play Leon, it's a little bit more slower action, much more survival horror like we used to love, and Chris is much more fast-paced action. They both work really well. The control scheme is the same, just how you use those controls change. And the differences between both gameplay styles I think is really, really, really good. I enjoyed both. I enjoyed going back and being a little bit more uh, survival horror, slow control style with Leon. And I also love the fast pace, just gears, shoot them up uh, as Chris. So that being said, I really love everything I played of this game. The only thing is some of the graphics left much to be desired. I'm hoping those are going to be touched up, especially some of the characters. Character art needs a little bit of help. Um, but other than that, yeah, I'm excited. Number eight. Gears of War Judgment. Why is this so low on my list? Well, although it does look really cool, it's going to be controlled just like the classic Gears, and it's going to take place 15 years before the first Gears, yada, yada, yada. But it's a little bit lower on my list because I hate when companies are like, this is it, we're done, no more. And then they're like, oh, but now we're going to do a prequel. <laughs> I know God of War is doing the same thing. But with Gears, I had kind of gotten over the fact that it was done. I had almost like moved on. I had grieved. I had, I had just, I had come to terms that Gears was done. And now they're like, oh wait, no, it's not. Now you get more. I'm excited for more. But still, at the same time, I'm kind of like, I would have rather had a Bulletstorm too. I know that's really weird to say, because I love Gears, but I also love Bulletstorm. But I just would have liked to even see a new IP, you know, a new big IP from them instead of another Gears. Number seven. Ah, Star Wars 1313. I'm a big Star Wars fan, obviously you guys already know that. And I was super excited to get to go in and check Star Wars 1313 out. It looks great. Um, I think they're finally starting to get the grasp of, of Star Wars doesn't always have to have force powers to make it a Star Wars game. I don't always need lightsabers to make something feel like Star Wars. I think they're finally getting that through. My only problem is in the demo um, that I sat through, there still wasn't enough gameplay to me fully judge it. The past Star Wars games, 
they've been known to have great artwork. So, of course, it looks good. But Force Unleashed 2 kind of controlled like crap. And the gameplay elements just wasn't there. And it just kind of felt like a god mode game. I don't know, there just wasn't much like, yeah, to Force Unleashed 2. It's kind of disappointing. And I haven't seen enough of Star Wars 1313 of the gameplay side to prove that it's going to be more in-depth and more, just more of a fun game to play. What I did see was a level that kind of played, I guess, like a, a Gears of War in space shooter. And then the other was more of like a Uncharted train scene climbing up the Fallen train. But that being said, those two types of gameplay styles are awesome. Let's just see if those guys at LucasArts can blend the two and make a game that not only looks great and has a great story, but also controls well and is fun to play. Personally, I'd love to see a little bit of RPG elements in there. I'd love for our character to grow and us gain powers as we go. And I'd like to be a little bit more challenging than just force push and lightsaber. Number six. I know everybody who saw this demo at the Ubisoft press conference is in love with this game. Myself included. I think it looks great. Little Yoshi's going to go to sleep now. Um, I think Watchdog looks great. Um, my only thing is I hope, you know, with these open world games, they kind of all do the same thing. It's all fetch quests. It's all go all the way on the other side of the city. Just we told you have to come all the way back. Then have to turn around and drop that dude off all the way at the other side of the city. Let's hope Ubisoft doesn't pull a rock star. And even though Rockstar did overall kind of perfect the open world game, they also are part of the demise of open world games. I'm going to get so much hate for that comment. I love the element of being able to hack into things and using that to complete your quests and your missions. I really love that. And I also love that there is a lot of gunplay, obviously, if you've seen the demo in the game. I just want to see more of it, which is good. It's good. I don't all of them automatically just go, eh, I don't like it. I want to see more of this game. I can see where it can do really well. I can see where it can do really poorly. Um, and time is going to tell whether this game is Grand Theft Auto or if it's it can stand on its own. So far with the hacking and the technology and all that stuff behind it, it looks like it can definitely stand on its own. And um, from what I've seen, the voice acting is really cool. And just, yeah, that whole element of using tech to complete your missions should be pretty awesome.